Hey, what's up? Jason here. Thanks for checking out the channel today. So I'm going to show you how to do one-off payments in Stripe. Now you can do this in a bunch of different ways. If you want to collect payment on your site, there's plugins that will do this. You can use buy now links with Stripe. So that means you would have to go into Stripe and create a buy now link and then put that on your bubble application somewhere. There's a few benefits to doing it this way without plugins. Number one, you get maximum control. Number two, you don't really have to worry about a plugin being flaky, which a lot of them are. And number Number three, this actually helps you learn how to do stuff in Bubble, which is probably the most important. If you keep relying on plugins, you're never really going to unlock the power of what Bubble can do for you. So here's the case that I use it for on my site. I have an event management site that allows my trainers to create classes and add attendee lists and stuff like that. And when we issue a digital credential or a certificate, they pay per individuals. So if they've got 10 people in their class, they buy 10 credits. So I need to have something that is dynamic and I don't want to have to go into Stripe and create these products every single time. And I don't want to create products dynamically in Stripe because then my Stripe is going to become a mess. So really what I want to do is just package up what this custom cost is, do a one-time payment, update the event, and then trigger all of the post event workshop stuff. So trainers will come here, they'll click this magic complete workshop, and then if they do have to pay, it will tell them, hey, you're going to have to pay for these certificates. They can optionally add a message to them. And then all of the attendees will show here. They can click which ones have successfully completed it. Then when you hit next, it's going to say, okay, here's how much you have to pay. Uh, you're going to be redirected to Stripe. And when you click confirm and pay, that's going to bring you to a Stripe checkout page with the amount that you're passing. And then the user can just type in the information here. It's going to process that transaction and then it's going to send the user back to the event page. Then it's going to tell them, hey, this has been paid because I notify the event in the back end that it's done. And then all the back end workflow stuff happens automatically. All right, so here's all the things that you're going to need to do. So Stripe, obviously, you'll need a Stripe account. You'll need to generate an API key on the test and the production side and then you're gonna to have to add an endpoint. And an endpoint will just point to a bubble workflow. So I recently did a video on how to test backend workflows using API connectors using Postman. You can check that video out here or over here, depending on where the card pops up. Inside of bubble, you're gonna to have to create the workflows. So for this one, we're just gonna add a simple workflow to process a successful payment. Uh, optionally, you can create a log file. I usually do because I'm capturing a transaction and then when that transaction is successful, that gets attached to the event. So the event knows whether or not the trainer has uh, successfully paid for the certificates or not. API connector stuff. So you're going to have to create a Stripe API connection. This one can get a little bit tricky when you're passing custom things to Stripe. So I'll get into that in a second. And then obviously in the UI, you're going to have to do something to invoke the payment. Now here's generally how the flow is going to work. So user is going to buy a product. They click purchase. Um, you can optionally add a transactional log in a bubble table. So if you have an admin tool and you want to be able to see all the Stripe transactions, it'll just save you from having to log into Stripe in the bubble workflow. So first you're going to send the data to Stripe and here we're going to include some custom metadata, which allows you to basically track what bubble object they're making the payment on. So if you have digital downloads, for example, you can use the unique ID or some other uh, string or uh, field inside of that bubble thing and then you can relate this transaction to it and then you'll know if that user has paid for it. This is an important thing, check security. So the backend workflow is basically going to check to see if this uh, post is coming from Stripe. If not, it will reject it and it will send me an email. Uh, otherwise, it will just accept the request. You can update the log as well. So if you're using transactional logs after Stripe has sent a response, you can update the log there. This is helpful when you have to do troubleshooting or when somebody comes back and says, hey, I bought your course in 1981. Can you find that transaction so I can get a receipt because I'm being audited by the government? And then uh, obviously update your purchase thing, like I mentioned, and then in the bubble UI show some type of output. So yes, it might be a little more work to do it this way than maybe to use a plugin, but a lot of the Stripe plugins are really big and bloated and it can be more confusing to use those plugins. But again, the point of doing this is so you can learn how to do this stuff in Bubble and then you're not going to be reliant on plugins. Okay, so let's look at the Stripe stuff first. When you create a Stripe account, 
and you go into uh, test mode here and then click on developers, you'll get this little notice that you're using test data. So you can basically do whatever you want uh, in Stripe in a test environment and it's gonna give you your API keys here. So you just create uh, an API key. If you don't have one created, there'll be a prompt to do that. And you want to use this secret key that they expose here. And that's what we're gonna to use to create our bubble API connection. Webhooks, so webhooks, this is where we're going to point to the backend workflow where we want to process it. So for example, uh, this one right here that is blurred out so you can't see except for the endpoint, it's basically passing it to the URL that Bubble gives you when you invoke a webhook. Okay, let's start with the API connector. So in your plugins, go to your API connector. If you don't have that option in here, it's a free one from Bubble. You can click on add plugins and you can add that. And I've created an API called Stripe Custom. And that Stripe Custom just basically allows me to do any API call that I want. So I've got a few custom things in here. And this is the one that I want for Stripe one-time payment. Now this is where it can get a little bit tricky because the documentation, well, <laughs> to be honest, is horrible. So uh, you have to kind of figure this stuff out yourself because Bubble will send over an array to Stripe to process custom payments using Stripe's line item object inside of the message that you send to Stripe. But it doesn't exactly tell you how do you send nested elements. So if you want, take a screenshot of this page. I'll put some of the other instructions up at the top and then uh, you can uh, save yourself a couple hours of beating your head against the wall like I did. So give your thing a name. You want to use an action. You want this set to JSON, not like me, Jason, but JSON. Sorry, I get that all the time. And this is the Stripe API that you want to use. You want to use checkout sessions because this is going to give you a Stripe URL that you redirect to to make that Stripe payment screen. So you want content type to be set to application JSON, body type to be JSON. This is where it gets confusing because you have to send these parameters as a query string. So typically what you would do if you're sending JSON is you would just paste the object down here, meaning you could go to the Stripe documentation and just straight copy their message and paste it in here but that won't work, which is very irritating. So you actually have to go and get all of these parameters. These are in the Stripe documentation API, and then you have to send those by checking this query string option here. And then just like every other thing in Bubble, you can make them optional or mandatory. Now, because I wanna reuse this, I don't always want to send metadata, but uh, for the events, I am. So a couple of other important things to note when you're sending the price, it actually sends it in cents. So if you have dollar values stored for a product in your bubble thing, you're going to have to multiply that by a hundred. Here's the back end workflow for bubble. So I've just called this invoice payment succeeded, which is the exact name of the event that Stripe sends. So if I go over to Stripe, you can see that the URL that I'm sending those events to is the one that bubble generates and I've got this set to expose as a public API workflow. Just for uh, getting this built and tested, you can leave these two checked and worry about security afterwards, but you wouldn't wanna run this workflow without authentication. Uh, what I do is I do a check from the IP address that Stripe is sending the event from, and then I reject it if it's not on that allowed list. So again, I did do a video where you can use detect request data to be able to uh, build your uh, workflow properly using an application called Postman. Again, you can check that up, check that out in the card above. And then the actions are pretty simple. So it's gonna create a log first. It's gonna say, this is my extra security check that I use. So basically it checks to see if the IP address that is sending the event to Bubble is on my allow list. If it's not, it just rejects it. And then it terminates the workflow if that IP address is not found in my uh, Stripe authorized IPs data thing. The Stripe event, so this is pretty simple. This is basically creating the log file. So if the Stripe event does not exist, so it's checking by the unique event ID from Stripe, it will go ahead and create it. And then this data is all coming back from Stripe's body object. So you've got all of your values here that you're getting your stuff from. You can pick whichever ones that you want to store. I just kind of store 
the basic ones and also attach it to the user so I know the user has paid for it and I also attach it to the uh, Stripe event so I know that the user has paid for the certificates for that particular event. And this step will just update the existing Stripe event if it's already found. This is useful if you're doing testing uh, or debugging and something goes wrong. You can just go back into whatever event it was and you can see all of the responses and the requests that it was sending to your endpoint. So you can go into your logs here. You can click uh, any. So this was one where it didn't work for whatever reason because I think I was using the wrong security key. It's going to show you exactly what Stripe is receiving. So the metadata for the event, the price, the description, all that kind of stuff. And then it's going to send what the response was. So you can copy and paste this response into Postman, for example, and retest it if you want. And Stripe also does offer a resend option for the messages as well. So this is going to capture everything. And then now let's take a look at the workflow inside the actual event pop up. Here's the action on the confirm and pay. So the first step is if they click on this and they've already made the payment. So I'm just checking to see if there is a Stripe event that has the event IDs metadata, which matches the event's unique ID. So if that exists, I know they've made the payment for that event and it just will close the pop-up and I change the text of that as well. Then it's going to terminate the workflow because it doesn't need to process it. So this is the one single action that runs the entire thing. So this stuff, it's just grabbing from what was set up in your Stripe API connector. And the success URL, I'm just sending them back to the event. You can make this whatever you want if you have a thank you for your payment page or something like that. The mode should always be payment because you're processing a payment. Um, if you want to send them to a custom cancel URL, you can do that as well. And then this is the line item parameter that you're sending. So I'm basically sending the count of participants. So these are the participants that they selected in that list. And I'm multiplying it by whatever their per certificate fee is. And then multiplying it by 100 because, again, it's putting it in cents. So I'm actually sending them for one certificate that costs $55. I'm sending 5500 to them and then they know that that's uh, $55, not $5,500. Although that would be pretty good for me. Uh, line item is the currency here and another line item is the quantity. And then this is what the text is that's generated on the page. So I'm just basically sending this is for this number of certificates for this event. And then here is the metadata where I'm sending the current page's unique ID so I know what event that it's associated to. Then I make changes to the list and I say these are the attendees to be marked as participated. It's kind of a temporary holding tank where just in case something goes wrong, it will show them the people that have received the certificates. Then if they added, say, three more people after the fact, they'd have to pay again. And then open website is whatever the result of that one time payment. So Stripe is going to send back a body URL and that body URL is the custom checkout page for Stripe. So it sends back a bunch of other stuff too, but all you really want is I want the body URL because that's going to bring them right to the payment page. All right, so I know that was a lot of information. And again, you could accomplish this with some plugins, but the benefit of doing this really is to get you familiar with how to use the API connector in Stripe, because this is going to make your life a lot easier down the road. When I first got started with Bubble, I was always relying on plugins too much, and it really wasn't helping me learn how to do stuff on my own. And this Stripe stuff is very, very simple. So just to sum up, you'll need a Stripe account, an API key, you create a endpoint to send things back to Bubble, then you create a workflow that will process the Stripe transaction. And again, the gotchas to look for is if you're sending these custom payments, make sure that you structure all of the line items in Stripe properly. So I'm going to put those things up on the screen again, and you can find them in the description and that will hopefully save you a lot of frustration. So thanks for checking out the video. This was longer than I wanted it to be, but hopefully this will get you up and running with one-time payments in Stripe pretty easily. See you next time.